Yo, yeah. look at this lighting. Holy shit. It's terrible. Yo, guys, what is up? Charlie Pangus here. Welcome to another video. So, last night, I was on Google, on my phone, just Googling stuff, and I found, found out that Photoshop just launched their M1 beta update. So, you can actually download it if you have the Creative Cloud app installed on your computer. This means I can test it and see how it works on the M1 chips that Apple just came out with because I have the new M1 Mac Mini and I have the M1 MacBook Air, which is actually yours. So I can't really take credit for it being mine. But anyway, you guys get the freaking point, all right? So I wanted to test it out because honestly, Photoshop's been running like dog shit, like straight up dookie on my computer. So I wanted to see how good it was and I'm not even going to make you guys wait till the end of the video. Holy shit. That it's a game changer. It's amazing. It runs so freaking smooth. Anyway, shout out to Adobe for launching the M1 update early for us to try out because man, that saved me from returning my M1 Mac Mini. Ask her. I was yeah. literally this close. He was this ready close. to throw it out the window. Look at this close. <laughs> Is it focusing? I was that close to returning it. So close. And it was annoying. As a graphic designer, as a content creator, you do not want your computer to lag. You don't have time for that. Like who the fuck wants to sit on the computer and watch the wheel of death spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and then it spins again and then the computer just shuts off on you. That's happened to me. So anyway, super stoked. Oh, and happy new year guys. It's awesome. We're in 2021. Hopefully this year is nothing like last year. I hope that's I hope this isn't like the evil or twin of 2020 you know what I'm saying but I have a, I have a feeling it's gonna be a great year so we purchased a bunch of props at Hobby Lobby because we just shot a rum commercial and I have a video coming out soon going over that but now we're returning the props 1000 IQ play 100% <laughs> all right I'm back at home and in my studio and we're gonna make something cool using the new Photoshop M1 update. And of course we have to start at unsplash.com, find some photo resources, drag those bad boys into Photoshop and see if we can come up with something cool. So I'm right here looking around, trying to figure out something that kind of catches my eye. <laughs> no pun intended though, but I did find an eye and it looked kind of cool. And I had this idea to incorporate some Chinese into this design because I don't do that very often. Now all I want to do is resize the eye and then we're going to create a square using the rectangle tool. And after creating this square, what I did is I actually created something called a clipping mask. Now, if you have two layers that are stacked, obviously we have layer one above the square. What you could do is you can actually hold an alt or option, hover in between each layer, and there's gonna be a little arrow down. You click, and that creates a clipping mask. So now, as you can see, my eye layer, which is layer one, is inside of the rectangle layer, which is the square. So now I can move that eye around inside of that square and do whatever I want with it, and it's not going to leave that square as long as the uh, clipping mask remains. I did mess with some other shapes, like adding a rectangle and stuff like that, but uh, I'm just gonna spoil something for you guys. It didn't work out, but it happens, okay? And sometimes that's okay to do some random shit because that's how you find out what works and what doesn't work. So, you know, you're gonna see in a second that this clearly didn't work out in my favor, but that's okay because I, I found a different direction, I guess you could say, that did end up working for me. Now I'm processing the photo just by adding some small adjustments like a brightness and contrast adjustment, desaturating the photo itself. And then what I did is I went up to filter, filter gallery, and I added some different effects, okay? So stacked on top of each other, I have gain, torn edges, and I even have a stamp effect. I'm playing with all these different, I guess you could say parameters, to kind of balance out this image and make it look kind of photocopied in a way, but I didn't want it to be too extreme. I wanted to retain some of the detail of the eye so you know that it's an eye, right? I don't want it to be too dark in certain areas, so I'm playing around with all these adjustments, and feel free to copy my settings right here if you really want, but um, that stamp effect is fire, by the way. You gotta try it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It really works best when you have a photo that has high dynamic range and some contrast at the same time. I'm also adding some half tones to this, and sometimes those can be really interesting. In this case, the swirls, the circles, didn't work for me because the swirl was in the kind of off center to the center of the eye. I didn't like that, so I got rid of that effect, and I think I went with just a normal dot uh, half tone, which is the classic, obviously, that's what screen printers use. Mess with these settings and uh, have fun with them because honestly, guys, you can do some really, really cool stuff. 
Don't get discouraged if you don't get the effect that you want right away. Trust me, these things work. You just have to practice and get familiar with them because the more that you use them, the more you're going to understand how they work and then you can just conquer it really fast if that makes sense. So right here, I'm just typing out some text. If you hit T on your keyboard, you can just literally start typing out text or you can apply some lorem ipsum, which is just kind of a placeholder text line. But uh, now I have this Chinese writing and it's not really saying what I want it to say yet, but I'm just trying to figure out what position I want it in first before figuring out the final name of the brand or whatever this is going to be, right? So, and even figuring out the font that I think looks better. As you can see here, I'm doing a translation for street kids and I'm just copying that from Google and pasting it where my text is on the left. And for the bottom, I typed in global brand, got that translation and then copied it and pasted it at the bottom. Now I'm making two different stamps, one with the mountain and one with just text. And I wanted to have one that kind of looked like it was stamped at the bottom left and one that was on the top right to give the design an interesting composition. And um, I'm not gonna explain this part too much other than I'm using type on a path. So anytime you make a shape in Photoshop, if you hit T on your keyboard and you hover over one of the corners or the edges of that shape, it's gonna have a little squiggly line, a wavy line. And that's how you know you can type on that path. And you just click and it's gonna put some lorem ipsum. And that's exactly what I'm doing here is changing the lorem ipsum to my own text using the different anchor points to maneuver the text around the shape so I can center it nicely. And that's pretty much it. This is just stuff that we go over all the time in my tutorials. So if you are new here, uh, make sure you watch my other tutorials, guys. I go over this stuff a lot. I mean, I've probably talked about the same topic thousands and thousands of times. I'm not even kidding. It's been so much. So anyway, um, pretty standard stuff here. So uh, enjoy this little part. I'm gonna speed this up for you. And then we're gonna move on to the final touches of the design. I have both of my stamps done, so now I just need to drag them in place. And for the bottom left one, I tried to combine the mountain with the text, and I didn't like that. So I actually ended up separating them in a second. You're gonna see that. I could have easily kept them together, but honestly, I just thought they looked cool separate. So I did end up separating those by just cutting out the mountains in the center. And another thing that's important to note is that the mountains in the center, I actually did the same exact filter from the filter gallery as I did with the eye. So I literally just applied the same effects with minor adjustments in case you guys are confused on what I did there. So that's how I got that effect. And I found the mountains on unsplash.com as well. Now it's time to position those stamps where they need to be and also add a color overlay to them so I can kind of figure out what color palette I wanna go with. And I ended up going with this off red color, um, kind of a magenta E color. So that was that. I found the positions I wanted and it was time to start thinking about the shape of the square. It was a little too clean for me, so I did end up adding a layer mask. And to really get those nice rough edges, I used one of my brush kits that you can actually find on my website. I have all these different brush kits, packs, whatever you want to call them, on my website. So just go to charliepangus.shop if you guys want to pick those up. Another thing on my website that I just added was something called Sezzel. I think that's how you say it. It's basically a payment option that allows you to make small payments on something. So let's say you're spending $30 on my website. It takes the $30 and it splits it up into four payments, which is $7.50 each. I love this because honestly, I don't like just throwing $30 out there if I wanna buy something. I'm not saying my brushes cost $30, by the way, they're actually really cheap. They're anywhere from five to $10 each. So I hope that helps you guys out, I really do, because I know these design resources can really change your design game. I hope you guys get your hands on them. They're really cool. And as you can see, they work great. Now I have this nice grungy square and it made the design look so much better. Another thing that I saw on my website is a vintage wash mock. And this only comes with a front mock, but man, this mock is awesome. It really gives you a vintage look. It looks like the shirt's been washed a million times and just degraded, which I really like that look. And all you have to do is copy your entire design without the background and paste it on top of the mock-up and just drag it where it's supposed to be, where it says artwork goes here. You want it to be in that folder. And then from here, we can change the blend mode to multiply or screen depending on your shirt color. And this will actually blend the design so much better. And as you can see, it looks natural. And if you really want to change the color, you can go into the group where it says change shirt color 
and make the shirt darker or any other color you want and this is the result you get this mock-up is super sharp and just really high quality so you can resize it honestly so much and it's not going to break apart or get pixelated oh and by the way don't forget to save your design okay so i'm saving my design right now as a psd file and that is the master file basically i can open that up and make changes to my design if i need to maybe somebody wants to buy the artwork and i need to change the the text or something like that i could do that with the psd file and if you're trying to print this with uh let's say dtg printing just save it as a png without the background and you can print it with dtg if you're screen printing it you want to make sure all the different colors are on their own respective layer that way the screen printer has layers to work with and that's as simple as it gets right there so far the photoshop m1 update is amazing even in beta form i cannot wait for the full release it worked flawlessly it didn't have one crash and honestly with the normal version of Photoshop right now, it crashes all the time on any M1 device. So if you have the new M1 MacBook Air or the Mac Mini like I do, it doesn't matter, it crashes. So with that being said, great job Adobe. Cannot wait for the full release of the M1 Photoshop update. And um, I hope you guys are having a happy new year too. So what I wanna do now is at the end of my videos, I wanna read some of your guys' comments. So I'm gonna do that real quick. The first comment I have right here is by Warbin, Warbin, sorry, Vargas. And he says, hey, your videos are fire. Would you be able to make one on creating items like track suits. You never know, man, never know, maybe I will. Another comment I have here is by Matt Watson and he commented on a very old video where I made some badge shapes and he says, absolutely brilliant, thank you. Thank you, Matt, that was a really nice comment, I appreciate you, man. This comment was by Ella and she says, love it, this looks sick and she's referring to something I posted in my community tab. If you guys don't know this, I post in my community tab almost every day. If you guys don't check that, please check it. I post all the time. But uh, that's the last comment I'm gonna read today. 2021 is officially here and it's going to be an amazing year. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.